Dunbar from speechmodification.com and this is my smart American accent training. In this video, we'll look at how to pronounce guess, guest, guesses, guests, get, and gets. So these are somewhat straightforward words, but it can be a little bit challenging to use these in phrases to make sure that we're putting the s and the t sounds in the correct places and to understand the various plurals and verb forms. So let's break it down and help you to use these words fluently and naturally in English. First of all, the verb to guess, as in I guess that's how you say it, has an unusual spelling with this uh, U-E spelling. Uh, we typically just spell this E eh vowel that's in guess with letter E. So that would be in a word like get um, or, um, or yes. We would just typically spell that with just the letter E rather than the U-E. So the first thing to do is to visualize it without this U if that's helpful for you and just think about it as the three sounds G, S, guess. And then same thing for guest. We also don't say this anything for this U sound. We just have the E vowel like in yes. Um, and so the word guest is just the same as the word guess, but we're just adding the blend at the end. T. So if you have difficulty with putting uh, blends at the ends of words, for example, if it's hard for you to say guest, then you might want to try it without the T and then add the T back. So guess, guest. Also, just visualizing it with a different spelling. Um, it's just like in the word best. For example, he was the best guest. Um, and then, of course, when we're putting these together, if I'm saying something like, I'll give you my best guess, being careful that we put the t here, but not on this word. That seems simple and straightforward, but you may, you may find it challenging when we're putting these together. Um, because we have a tendency to want to make two of the same combinations of sounds. And so sometimes those, um, those final sounds at the ends of words might drop if you're not being very careful to say guest versus guess. The other reason it's challenging is if I'm talking about a guest, my guest, my guest in, my guest in, um, my guest that, um, the guest that was the best. <laughs> For example, when I'm saying just guest or best, I will say the t sound at the end, the guest, the best. But if I say the best thing, the guest, the guest that, the guest that, we tend to use an unreleased t here. That means I'm not saying the guest that, I'm not letting that t burst out. If I have st by itself at the end, I will say the t. But in connected speech, we link, and when we link to another consonant sound, that T sometimes gets unreleased and you won't hear it. So the difference between I guess that and the guess that is only that when we have no T on a word guess, I guess that, I guess that, my S sound can continue for a fairly long time and I go right to the TH. I guess that, guess that, versus the guess that I'm gonna stop the air to mark the T, the guest that went um, to their room, the guest that already paid. I'm uh, only, you're only hearing this sound, but it's short and it gets stopped because I am making the T, I'm just not releasing the T. I'm not saying the guest that, I'm saying the guest that. So I'm doing an unreleased T there as I link. So the difference there between guest and guest is not always whether you hear a T sound, it's how we link those and how it sounds. If I'm saying, I guess in I guess in a while, guess in, I'm gonna link and I'll hear that's going right into the vowel sound of in, the guest in, the guest in room, whatever. <laughs> I'll hear the T this time and it'll sound more like a flap. So it'll sound like the guest in, the guest in the um, presidential suite. Um, okay, so you can learn more about how we connect and uh, link T sounds at the ends of words in my videos for that, as well as in my Sounds of English course. I'm going to walk you through those types of details. But for these particular words and words that end with S versus ST, it can be helpful to understand how they sound similar and different depending on how we're linking them. Okay, next step, when we make these plural, we have a different rule. So when I have a word that ends with 
the s, the sh, the ch, or the z sounds, like guess. Um, to make it plural, I have to add another syllable with the is sound, because I can't just add a s or a z to guess um, uh, to make it plural or to make it um, the third person verb form. So in this case, it can be a noun, one guess, two guesses, or I guess and he guesses. So in this case, it's the same pattern, the same rule. We add a syllable. And this final s in words that end with es that are plurals or third person verb forms, um, we say a z sound for that. So my guesses are always great. My guesses are. You can hear that I'm using a z sound to link there. Um, I'll give you three guesses. Guesses. So that z sound is not a strong z. I don't want three guesses. <laughs> three guesses. Three guesses. It sounds like a very weak z sound or a very light s. But I also don't want a strong s. Not three guesses. Three guesses. Um, but three guesses. Um, and then for guests, uh, the word guest ends with the t sound. So we simply add the s sound, guests. Um, I say simply, but it's not always easy and simple to pronounce this because it ends with s, t, s, and we need to make all three sounds or we won't be able to hear that it's guests rather than guess. Um, I have a guess about the guests. Um, so you can hear how I do say s, t, s at the end of that. <laughs> um, to build that, again, just start building one consonant at a time. So you can say guess, guest, guests. Um, yeah, you can also, if you, if you may find it easier to use that in linking, the guests are, the guests are, um, then my s links to the next word, and it does sound a little bit voiced there, the guests are, the guests are coming, or it does sound like a sound, but you can see how that final sound links a little bit to the next vowel. Okay, and then um, lastly, the simple words get and gets, I include these here because um, we, we have, for example, guest has the s and t sound, but gets has the t and s sound. So also making sure that you can make a difference between I get and he gets, he gets it, um, that we have that t and that s sound. Because I don't want gets to sound like guess or guest. Okay, so practice these words by themselves, then put them in some short phrases with just the word, like I guess, um, the guest at the hotel, three guesses. Then try using some mixed combinations because this is where you might find that the challenge occurs. If I'm saying, for example, the guest that gets it, um, I, might, <laughs> I might notice that it's challenging there and I just thought of another word. If we look at the word um, guest, I guessed it, uh, that has the same pronunciation as this guess. So the past tense of to guess, I guessed it, um, this ed says a t sound because when we have a past tense following a s sound, the letters ed say t. So um, today I guess, but yesterday I guessed. Um, and you also notice if I say I guessed it, I guessed it, the T turns back into more of a D because we use it as a flap when we link that final T sound. So that's just like when we say, I get it, it sounds like get it. I'm running out of room on my board here. Too many um, different topics going on. I get it, I guessed it, I guessed it. Um, so again, you can learn more about linking the final T's, past tense pronunciation, how we t say guessed, but guessed it. Um, in my videos for past tense and for final T. You can also check those out. You can check them out on the channel and also in our American Accent six-week course. We talk about past tense, plurals, different verb forms, consonant clusters, all of these topics to help you improve uh, your fluency, your pronunciation, and just feeling natural using these types of patterns. So again, practicing some mixed, mixed practice, for example, um, um, I get it that you guessed it last week. Um, I guessed that that guest would be staying too long. Um, I'll give you some guesses about uh, who's going to get the prize. Um, okay, so for more practice of this, more types of phrases, uh, you can check out the free lessons on our website and also in our online courses. We talk about these kinds of topics. 
But this was a, a suggestion from a viewer who was struggling with some of these different pronunciations, the spelling, um, the sounds, and using these uh, fluently and easily in your speech. So recognizing um, that when we have blends and consonant clusters, you just wanna build up the ability to make sure you're putting all those sounds on the end. We do use a lot of added sounds at the end for uh, plurals, for verb forms, for possessives, and they really matter because it changes the grammar of what you're saying. So if you're not pronouncing them accurately, uh, it may affect how people understand you and the meaning of what you're saying. Okay, kind of long topic today for our word of the day class, um, but a good one and a useful one. I hope you found it useful as well. Leave me a comment below um, if you have any questions about what we've uh, talked about today, or if you have a request you'd like to see in a future class, I'll go through that, uh, answer your question, send you resources, or add your word to my list to cover in a future word of the day. I'll be back again tomorrow with another word of the day, and on Saturday we'll have our live question and answer class where you can attend Type your questions in the chat and I'll answer them for you live. Thanks so much for watching the video, for liking, commenting, sharing. All of those things help the channel to grow and I truly appreciate your support. I look forward to seeing you in our next class. I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com. Remember, if you want to sound like a native speaker, you can do it. Speechmodification.com. Bye everyone. Hope to see you again soon.